Hi everyone, this is Mojax back with another walkthrough tutorial video for you today. Basically, the entire DJ industry seems to have gone a bit iOS crazy recently. We've already got Native Instruments making waves with their Tractor DJ app, which lets you mix music on your iPad or iPhone. And now the other big player in the game, which is Serato, have come in and they've actually brought out this new app called Serato Remote. Now, as the name implies, you can't mix music on your iPad with this. This is a supplementary controller for your Scratch Live or your Serato DJ setups, but it does look pretty cool. It's just dropped, so I'm going to hook up a load of equipment. Let's get this going, and, and I'll show you around it a little bit. We'll see how we get on. I'm going to show you first of all with Serato DJ because it's all in one. It's easier to demo with, and then I'll uh, hook up my Scratch Live SL3 in a little while and show you how it's done with that as well. Now, setup really couldn't be much easier. You've got uh, the new version of Serato DJ and also of Scratch Live. Just installed those, and now when you go into those, you've got in your plugin section of the setup screen, you've got the remotes tab and any connected remotes will appear there or any that have been connected. You can deactivate them whatever you want to do so there's nothing there at the moment let's go back into the ipad app itself so let's open that up serato remote now i've got no wi-fi on here on either of these devices um, we're going to go purely via cable to start with now i don't know quite how they've done that basically any midi controls like i use lima and that sort of thing and you always 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 need either a midi sort of converter adapter or you have to go via wi-fi to make those work this you're just going to be able to use your regular 30 pin in my case or the lightning connector that comes with your ipad and that'll just hook in directly via the cable as i say i don't know how they've done it it's new it's exciting i think that's the way to go unless you really need that portability to be able to take your ipad away from the decks altogether then i think the the wired option is probably the best and you'll probably see why i think that is as we go through so there's no laptop found at the moment it says you can connect via usb there's still nothing there if that's not working then you can it explains how to do it and you can set up a wireless option so you've got ad hoc network you can do on mac or windows and it'll show you how to take you through how to do that or how to connect to your regular router, which is you know pretty straightforward. You could do your home router, or if there's a, a Wi-Fi router at your gig, you could hook up to that as well. So let's go and just connect up, as I say, the regular Apple cable, plug it in, and off we go. And immediately then it's seen my MacBook Pro, I can connect to it there, and the GUI shows up straight away. Uh, I'll just go back in, and again, we see now that's remote at Serata at Mojax's iPad. All shown connected, it's connected via cable. So couldn't really be much more plug and play than that, to be honest. Gonna be using music from Warped Bridge again, a local Newcastle house label, really good label. Just go and check them out. So the actual transport controls or the, the library controls, you can scroll up or down with this central panel. You can tab to different crates in and out of those and then to actually load a track all you do is highlight the track in the library and you drag it in like so and just load another one into the other deck so you can see what's going on so straight away um, we've got the bpm information we've got the elapsed and remaining time you've got a waveform at the top there showing the whole waveform for the whole track reflecting where your cue points are all your cue points as well are colored according to what you set them in the program so that changes and reflects instantly so let's make that one a red one and there you go so i'll just get some music going there we go and you can see the virtual deck is lining up it's all happening rewind fast forward it's pretty accurate really not too bad at all so then you can obviously jump with your cues. Latency seems pretty good. I don't know if you'd want to get into hardcore cue juggling on just a touch screen. You might want to use your slightly more tactile controls for that. But it's pretty good and it's, it's very responsive, which is what matters. You can add cue points from the app and you can delete them as well. Very simply, it resets after each time you've done that so you can't accidentally delete too many. So there we go, that's, that's really straightforward. Then you've got, on this page, you've got your loop. So you've got a beat loop, four beats, two beats, 
down to 132nd and up to 32 beats. You can change that then as well to loop roll. Which again, very responsive, works really quickly. Now you can, if you're not too worried about your library or your display of your decks, what you can do then is expand this page up and that gives you a few more controls. You've got in and out manual looping, halve and double that if you want. Turn it on and off and then you've got access to just the basic um, play buttons for your SP6 sampler as well. On there. So that's really, you know, that's your jack of all trades page, that one. That's got a lot of stuff going on. That really is like a control, you know, that, that's, that's brilliant. Love it. So let's go back in there and look at the next page. So we've got the actual SP6 page, slightly bigger version of what there, and you can see what's going on in terms of the play modes, the looping and so on. It gives you a bit more display. If you want more control over that, fire it up like so. You now you can got individual levels for each one you can set each one to loop on and off you can set them to sync and you can set the play mode as well for each one so that really is quite clever and obviously you've got your four banks there as well and you've got a stop for each one so you can stop each clip as it goes so that's the fully featured control for the sp6 now to be honest like, i don't really use the sp6 for anything apart from drops um, it's something I'd quite like to do, but I find all this kind of complicated and actually mapping it would be a bit of a pain. But with this, it's all ready to go. You know, you, you could have synced like drum loops rolling over the top of your tracks, um, especially in Serato DJ if you're using sync as well, generally. Then it's a pretty sweet idea. And it, it's certainly making me think about ways I can use the SP6 in ways I haven't really done so before. Uh, you'll notice on this page, you've still got your first three cue points ready to hand as well so they've really thought about sort of how the layout's going to work it's a quite a small screen but they seem to have fitted quite a lot into it let's get into the effects then on this little setup so you've got your regular mode latch mode so you basically turn the effect on and off very simple and then there's temp mode as well where the effect is only active when you're actually touching with your finger. So that's rather sweet. You can obviously change your effects. I'll get into how you select your different favorite effects in a minute, but just show you a few there. And then if you expand this page up, there's even more there in terms of where well, it doesn't look a lot more busy, but there's one very cool feature when you put it onto this, which is roll mode. So you can roll the track. at the same time as doing your effect. So let's, let's get to some beats again. One touch, you're controlling the loop roll and you're controlling the effect as well. And you can have that in latch mode as well, so you can have it off. I reckon there's a lot of creative possibilities with that. Really quite interesting, I think. That's, the, that's gonna be pretty sweet to deal with. So let's go back to the main page lower that down again right if your effects as well you can have a, a what's called a quick effect so you basically got that one touch effects on your main page again you've got all your, your actual pads you've got your loops and loop rolls and your effects and your display of your deck on one page you know pretty functional all round I would say let's turn that off then let's go back into the preferences obviously you can play with your connection preferences in there there's two different view modes you've got. So you've got the virtual decks, which are in now, and there's also track info display, whereby you actually get the track artist and title displayed on there instead of, instead of the actual virtual deck. That means if you've got a slower iPad or something and it's, it's kind of looking a bit dodgy, you could just stick with that. I actually prefer this, I think. I'd like, if I want to use this as like a second screen kind of setup, to be able to see which track is loaded to which deck. Is, is more useful to me in many respects than the virtual deck because I've got that in front of me physically already. So this is a, the way to go, I think, for me. And again, you've still got your BPM time remaining. You've still got your overview there as well. Really liking that one. Let's go back and just put that back to the 
virtual deck mode. And then there's another preference pane, which is to edit your favorite effects. In each mode, you've got your, um, in Serato DJ, you've got the, in your effects, you've got the single and the multi effects. Well, you can basically choose which go into your favorites. So that's the full, the full gamut of them. They're all in their favorites now, but if you wanted to just have Let's say, then you can change the order they're going. So let's just say I just want to have, in my effects, I just want to have the high pass filter and I want to have the echo. That's my favorite effects. Don't need anything else in the drop down. I need it to be nice and quick. Well, there you go. So I'm going back into then effects panel. And that's all I've got now. High pass and echo. Really quick to change. You can't actually change which deck is assigned to which effects unit using this, which in some respects it's a bit disappointing. I, I know a lot of people tend to have, when they're using, especially with Scratch Live, they have one effect on one effect unit and a, say an echo and they have a, like a flanger maybe on the second effect unit and the way they go is just they change the deck assignment for each one because it's one button push. If you're actually dealing with these little drop down menus and so on on the computer, that can be a bit of a pain. But on this, because you've got the, the ability to change your favorites and everything else, I think that's really doesn't matter so much. You could just leave each effect unit assigned to each deck and just straight away you've got them in front of you to change and use without any problem at all. So, you know, it might change your workflow slightly. It might be something Serato can add in at a later stage, but from my point of view, I, you know, it, it does the job for the time being. Let's just turn that back to normal. Right. So, is there anything else I need to show you still? We've done the preferences, the connection. Oh yeah, we'll show you with the Wi-Fi, shall we? Let's, well firstly, let's do a little test. So what we'll do, I've got this connected obviously via the USB cable. I'm just gonna yank it now, right? And no effect on Serato DJ. That's really important. You wanna know if you're controlling it with this remote app on your iPad and you're at a gig and then you lose Wi-Fi connection or your USB cable flakes out or whatever, you're not gonna get a break in the music, you're not gonna get dropouts or anything like that. And as we've just seen there, you won't. There's no problem with that at all. It's just carried on playing without any issue whatsoever, which yeah, I think that's pretty important. So I've got Wi-Fi off at the minute. I'm gonna turn it on. I've got a couple of options we could go down here. Let's close that on the iPad as well. We could connect to my home Wi-Fi network, but what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna create a network. Uh, normally you would add security on there, but I'm just doing it quickly for this demo, so I won't do it now. So that's now created a network called Mojax's MacBook Pro. And let's go into settings on here. On the iPad, I'm gonna turn on Wi-Fi and there's Mojax's MacBook Pro. Now at the moment with the latest iOS 6.1, whatever it is, Wi-Fi ad hoc seems to work pretty well. There have been problems with various iOS updates in the past which is why having this cable connection is so good. I used to even take a Wi-Fi router to the club to use with Lima for a while, but uh, that's just a bit ludicrous, really. So it looks like the ad hoc is working better now, though. So we should be able to work pretty well now. Straight away, let's see. Oops, no laptop found. Oh, yes, there is. SDJ at Mojax is MacBook Pro, and we're back. Again, no break in the, in the communication, no break in the music, no dropouts or anything like that. It is literally just worked just connected so there's no USB connected now we're just on the Wi-Fi one reason that you definitely might want to use that uh, track info view is that when you get scratching when you connect it via Wi-Fi the virtual deck as you can see there goes a little bit haywire it's really not reflecting what's going on at all again it's not affecting the music it's not affecting the main Serato DJ program but it's a bit crazy so I would Definitely, if I was going wireless, I would want to go for this view with the track info because that is basically useless anyway. You know, you can't do anything with it if it's like that. So you might as well just have the track info and make better use of that space, in my opinion. So that's pretty much it with Serato DJ. I think there's not a lot else to show you. One other thing there is, is you can instant double if you're into your cutting and scratching. All you do is just drag one deck onto the other and immediately you've got your instant doubles so that's pretty sweet and works perfectly so that's looking fantastic I will just fire up then with scratch live and we'll take a look at that as well
Right, so just a quick second part to the video then. I'm gonna show you briefly with Serato Scratch Live, just how it works exactly the same really. Not a lot different to see, but I will show you. So I've got my SL3 hooked up, obviously no turntables or anything at the minute, but I'm just running into a mixer and back in again so you can hear the audio and I can use internal mode on the machine itself. So we look into the setup, we've got the remotes tab there in the plugins again, same as before. Let's hook up the USB. I've turned off all the networking stuff. There is connected up and we just open up Serato remote and we should get the same result. There you go. Serato scratch live and that's now connected. So I can go through, scroll through my library, do my tabs, through my crates and all that again. Wonderful. Let's load up a different track this time. All works exactly the same. Now obviously you've only got your five key points. So we'll just start the playback. There we go, but you can add them, you can delete them, you've got the full waveform overview there still as well, all your loops, loop rolls, work just as well, all the other functions are there, you've got your SP6 again as well, obviously we are missing the sync there but uh, that's lacking in Scratch Live, hopefully they'll sync the SP6 to the decks at some point in the future, that would be really cool if they did, I wish they did. And then your effects obviously are slightly different because you've got the DJ effects from Scratch Live instead. Let's open those up so you can see what's going on. So we can choose our favourite effect. So I've got a low pass filter and you can see that reflecting on the screen as well. Now I haven't assigned to a deck. Again you've got no way to assign to a deck. So you're going to have to remember to set that up. Maybe do deck 1 and deck 2 to different decks. But still just working perfectly well temp mode, you've got your beats adjust, if you've got some favourites in there, and again the multi-touch, so that's all working really well, and you've also still got the roll option, temp mode, which is pretty neat, whatever software you're using. So that's your uh, Serato remote for Serato DJ and Serato Scratch Live. I'm really excited by this. As I say, I've been using Lima and stuff for ages. I like the customizability of it and all that sort of thing, but sometimes you just want stuff that's plug and play. And this is the very definition of plug and play, as far as I'm concerned. If you're not into mapping CCs and all that sort of stuff, then this is the one for you without a doubt. And having this extra layer of info talking back to your iPad is something that's, yeah, I think it's gonna to appeal to a lot of people. So check it out, it's in the App Store. Only works on iPad, no iPhone. It would be really neat to have a little iPhone version as well you could do a cup. So again, a few things I hope they improve on in the future. It isn't perfect, but right now, I think it's definitely worth a play. You can check out my other videos at youtube.com slash mojaxvdj. Thanks a lot for watching, bye bye.